Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this press conference as we get ready for the Magnificent Seven ride again. A great night of championship boxing live this Saturday from Resorts World Arena in Birmingham, England. It is all being brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Unibet. Tickets are still available, and they can be purchased through Ticket Factory. Let's now welcome the participants. First, here is Hovaness Hovo Martirosian. Let's welcome Pierce Big Bang O'Leary. Let's welcome Owen Cooper. Let's welcome Ethan Jammy James. Let's welcome Tyrin Soiga. Let's welcome Zach Parker. Let's welcome Brad Strand. Let's welcome Dennis the Menace McCann. Let's welcome Cash Ali. Let's welcome Joe the Juggernaut Joyce. Let's welcome Eric Terrible Robles Ayala. Let's welcome Liam Dangerous Davis. Let's welcome Brad the Nuki Bomber Pauls. Let's welcome Nathan Hipman Heaney. Let's welcome International Boxing Hall of Fame promoter, Mr. Frank Warren of Queensberry Promotions. And now here is your host, Mr. Dev Sonny. Thank you, thank you. Thank Boo. you very much. Thomas Triber, that was, uh, that was wonderful. Great intros as ever. And I felt like Scylla Black at the end. Over to your host, Dev Sarni. Look uh, welcome. Like, look like that. <laughs> look, look like Scylla Black. Great start, thank you. Welcome uh, to viewers joining us across TNT Sports and Queensbury YouTube channels. Welcome to Birmingham. We are hours away now from a mouth-watering Magnificent Seven show this Saturday night, live on TNT Sports. It all starts from 6.30. And, I mean, look around. Look at this top table. There's belts here. There's unbeaten fighters here. There's a little bit of something for everyone. There are unbeaten records on the line. There are titles on the line. There are fighters looking to prove that they can get to the top level. There are fighters looking to prove that they still belong at the top level. It's sponsored by 32 Red and Unibet, and it's brought to you by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, sat here to my right, Mr. Frank Warren. Uh, Frank, we're back. The Magnificent Seven ride again. What a show, and uh, tell us about this one. Well, good afternoon, everybody in Birmingham. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. This format is a very good format. We did it many, many years ago, and we, we re revived it last year, and I think we had domestic show of the year. And this, well, I think, will be the same this year. This is a great night of boxing, competitive fights, and for 
the winners of these fights, and maybe some of the losers, but certainly for the winners of the fights, they're going to go on to bigger and better things. And boxing's on a real high at the moment, so there's going to be some great opportunities to capitalise on their God-given talents. And so I feel uh, we're going to see some competitive fights on, on Saturday, some real competitive fights, some dramatic fights. And I'm sure, as always, as I say, there'll be some upsets along the way. So um, I'm, looking, I'm really looking forward to it. As a boxing fan, I really am looking forward to, to Saturday. It's going to be a great night of boxing. Thank you, Frank. We were, we'll bring you in on, on the various fights. We can talk about the fighters. But yes, so much coming up, including a, a clash between two unbeaten super lightweights, Pierce O'Leary from Dublin taking on Hovannis Martyrosian. That's 13-0 versus 16-0. The WBC International Super Lightweight Championship is on the line. And I'm, I'm going to begin with Hovannis Martyrosian, who's down that end of the table. Hovannis, uh, welcome. A big moment for you, your first fight outside of Belgium. How are you feeling about this fight? He's looking forward to the fight. He feels very good. And what does, uh, what does he know about Pierce O'Leary, Big Bang, over here? Yeah, he, he's a good boxer, but we prepared very good, and we will see Saturday. Okay, well, let's bring in Big Bang, Pierce O'Leary. I know you've got, a, you've got a new team, but the same dream very much there. You've got that WBC gold. Tell us how you're feeling about the man sat at the opposite end of the table and, and this moment in your career. Yeah, it's a big step up. Um, another good step up for, for um, live TV fighting. So I'm looking forward to it. He's got a great record. He's 16 now. Um, he hasn't fought outside Belgium, but I ain't taking nothing away from him. He's a very good kid. Um, but respect him. He's got power. He's got 10 KOs. So I need to bring the A game again. You've been sparring Josh Taylor as well. I mean, in, he, he's been to the top of the mountain in your weight division. Tell us what you've kind of learned from that and what, what advice and experience you've got. Um, sp yeah, sparring Josh, he's a fantastic fighter. He's obviously been on the spilt, um, world champion on my way. So um, it's good to get clips off, get tips off him. But at the same time, I built some weight confidence in how I dealt with, with certain individuals, sparring and whatnot. So... Um, yeah, listen, I just think focus on um, focus on Saturday night and get the win and push on. A couple more for you, Pierce. Um, I, I saw a, a post go up. You are now a forged, uh, stout, sponsored athlete. It looks like you've got the backing of Conor McGregor as well, which must uh, must be pretty cool. Yeah, I know Conor well. Um, I know him a bit personally as well, so that's not too bad. But I'll hopefully get a fight back to Ireland. And, um, and obviously, a place God, Frank... And Connor can walk together and make something big happen for all the Irish sports who Franks are signed now, especially Queensbury. Um, it's the card there yeah, to be stacked. It's crying back home for um, the boxing. Big nights like this. And this and all we can do is just have a look. Final one for you, Pierce. There's been a lot of talk about purse bids and pullouts and things like that in your weight division with the likes of Dalton Smith and, Ad and Adam Azim. I can imagine if you were offered either of those fights, I, I know what your answer is. Come on, Gizzy. <laughs> well, yeah, no, listen, of course, they're the fights that we want. Um, that ABO title is where I want to be fighting for. And look at this fight. We have, we have a big tough test Saturday night, but get this, get this one out of the way and, and all guns blazing then afterwards and hopefully it'll get, get us mandatory or some, some sort of down the line where it'll get us pushed for that, the fight for that title. Frank, let me bring you in here on uh, the rise of the Big Bang uh, from Dublin over here. Looks like he's got some big plans. Look, Pierce is a, he's a fabulous, fabulous fighter, and uh, we're delighted. He's really 13 and 0 now, and he's fighting a guy who's 16 and 0. Um, he reminds me of Clark Kent with those glasses. He takes them off, and he becomes in the ring Superman. I mean, he's a fabulous fighter. There's no doubt about it, and I'm expecting. I'm expecting big things from him. It's going to be a tough fight, but I think he, I'm hoping and think he'll come through it. And if he does, he will get himself 
a good rating in the BC, a very good rating. We're moving, moving him up the ratings. And he'll be looking for a big, big fight this year, and we'll make sure it happens. But first of all, he's get, got to get through Hovan, Hovhannis. I think I pronounced that right. I hope. Yeah. And he's got to get through him. But, you know, if anybody can do it, he certainly can. OK, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Pierce. Thank you, Havanis, as well. The next fighters that we're going to speak to, it's two unbeaten welterweights who shared a room together back in the amateurs and now on Saturday will share the ring together, putting it all on the line. The vacant English welterweight title will be on the line as Owen Cooper and Ethan James duke it out. Let's start with Owen Cooper. I know, Owen, you're a fan of the traditional route. You've won the Midlands area title. This is the English title now, but this is a tough tough opponent. Tell us how you're feeling heading into this. Yeah, um, like I said, it's a tough opponent, um, but it's, it's, it's what we've been putting in the graph for for the past 11 weeks. Um, we know what Ethan's about. We know he's a good fighter, like I said, but um, I, just, I just believe I'm a better one, and I believe on the night um, I, I'm victorious. What, what are your memories from sharing a, a room together back in the amateurs? I mean, did, did he wind you up? Did he get on your nerves or was, was he just perfectly fine? No, no, it was, it was sound, you know, we were, we were teammates. Um, from what I remember, it was, it was a good trip, it was a good laugh. Um, but yeah, that was, that was it. It was just, uh, just, just teammates back then. And, uh, and yeah, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Do you think he's ever boxed anyone like you? No. Um, Moorcroft was, Moorcroft was a good lad, um, but I feel like Moorcroft let him do what he wanted to, um, kind of admired him a bit, um, whereas I'm not, I'm a, I'm a strong welterweight, and um, yeah, I feel, I feel like it's going to be something different. He might have experienced someone like me, you know, in the amateurs, he's got a good amateur record, but, um, but over 10 rounds it's different, and um, I'm not, I'm not going to stand there and let him hit me for 10 rounds and, uh, and not do nothing about it. Well, he said you could be his first stoppage. No, I, I, I hope so. Um, I hope he thinks that because um, he's going to have to stand and hold his feet if he's, if he's going to get any power behind the shots. And um, if he's to do that, it plays into my favour even better. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, hope, I hope he tries. Well, let's find out. Uh, Ethan James, uh, the, the comment that I mentioned there about him potentially being your first stoppage. You said that to me after the, the first press conference. Got that confidence heading into this, that this man here could be the first stoppage on your record? Yeah, I go into every fight with the same amount of confidence like that, but um, I'm going to keep saying it until one day it happens, so don't be shocked when it does. But yeah, now nah, I've had a good camp and uh, confident going into Saturday night. You've been sparring bigger guys as well, I understand. So you, you, you're sort of that man strength's all coming, isn't it? Yeah, I've been mixing it up with the big boys. I always do in the gym with the likes of Kieran and um, Pysel and Mike. So mixing it with the heavy lads, but also had the sharp amateurs jumping in out. Two rounds here, two rounds there. So, um, yeah, we're, we've been doing 10 rounds straight with them boys. So feeling good, feeling fresh. I've heard you say that if the best Ethan James turns up, you can have an easy night against anyone. So are we expecting the best Ethan James on Saturday and an easy night against Owen Cooper here? Well, yeah, that's what I train for. I, f I believe that if I turn up best on the night, I could beat anyone. That's, that's just what I believe in my ability. So, and with the training I've been putting in over the last 10 or so weeks, I, I believe I'll be in the best condition, ready for Saturday. He wants you to stand and trade with him. We'll see what happens Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I can stand and trade if I need to, but it'll be, it'll be on my terms. So I'm just going to go in there and adapt to what's in front of me. Anything you want to tell him? No, man, good luck. All, all the best and uh, best man to win on Saturday night. Two gentlemen, Frank, a uh, wonderful fight in, a, in one of boxing's blue ribbon divisions, English title on the line as well. Tell us about this one. Well, it's a good fight, isn't it? 21, 21 fights between them, 25 win, 21 wins. And uh, there's, they're, they're, they're two gentlemen, as you quite rightly say, and uh, was it roommates before? We've well, got news for you fellas, the winner will get the top of the bed. <laughs> So, uh, but look, they've got a lot to fight for and, uh, and I'm sure as much as they respect each other on the night, once that bell goes, they'll get down to business. And again, it's going to be a cracking fight. There's no doubt about it. Fantastic stuff and added incentive there with the top of the bed as well, gentlemen. So we, we look forward to this one. Let's keep things moving. Another couple of unbeaten fighters 
Dennis McCann and Brad Strand, a fight that really ignited at the launch press conference. A lot on the line for this one. Uh, Brad, I'm going to come to you first here. This really, it's the moment you've been crying out for in your career. It's right here. He's sat, only Tyron Zoiger is in, in between you. Uh, tell us how you're feeling about this fight. Yeah, David, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, this is the fight I've asked for, and I've been waiting for this opportunity, so uh, I finally got it. It's just all I've got to do is perform now and take me chance. Well, it was a lively first press conference. He said that you were a warm-up. He said that he's going to do more tickets than you in Liverpool. And he said you had a big head. Uh, what, what are your reflections on that? And have you got anything to say to him here today? Uh, probably just he's, he's more got a big mouth than I've got a big head. That's all, really. Your head, your head I've got a bit smaller, though. I'm not going to lie. The diet, in it. In it. <laughs> well, Dennis McCann said he was going to take over Liverpool. Um, you've, you've obviously been up there your, your whole life. Has he taken over Liverpool? Um, I wouldn't know him. I, I haven't seen him about. Like I've only seen him at one place, so I wouldn't say he's took over the pool. They have no. Let's bring in Dennis McCann. Um, you, you had a nice opening comment there about Brad Strand's head. I can see yourself as well. The, the, I know the Haribo's gone. We saw the video the, the other day. The Haribo's gone. The hair's gone as well. Who, who are you and what have you done with Dennis McCann? <laughs> it's all banter, and it's all banter. Um, just cut the hair off. Been in camp mode. I've been in camp since Christmas, you know, so... Cut the cut the hair off and then um, just knock it down. Do you feel like you can win this fight any way you like? I think I can do whatever I want, when I want, and how I want in this fight. Um, I think it's the the best Dennis McCann you're ever going to see. I've been in camp all Christmas. Um, I think the last six months I've gone from a boy, a boy to a man. And um, as you all seem to forget that when I turned pro, was my first pro fight was a, I was a week 18 fighting 30 30 something year old men. That's what people forget, you know. I was 23 about five weeks ago. Now I'm starting. Now I'm starting to feel my manpower's seriously come true, you know. Um, I'm 23 now, and I think my time is now. I've got a very active year ahead of me. Um, I'm feeling very strong. I've had the best sparring that I could possibly have, possibly have. I've employed good sparring from some Cubans over and. And yeah, I think it's the best camp I've ever had my whole career. My weight's the best I've ever been. Everything's, thank God, everything is great. Let's, let's ask Brad about this. Um, Brad, I've heard you talk about how you actually like fighting southpaws. With that in mind, could this actually be an easy night for you on Saturday? Yeah, we'll see on Saturday, Dev. But um, if, if the best version of me turns up, it'll be an easy night. Have you got the edge in sort of pure boxing ability? Is that, is that how you're, you're reading this? Uh, no, I just think I'm better than him, to be honest. In what way? Are you faster? Are you stronger? I'm better. I'm faster than you. I'm stronger than you. Mm-hmm. How do you know? I'm better looking than you. <laughs> uh, you wear worse clobber than IQ, me, though. I wear worse clobber than you. Where are you off, Cheltenham? <laughs> and all that. I look the part, mate, to be honest with you. What? I think I look the part here. Nah, you look like you're off the beach. Where did you get that from? Bern- Bernardo's or something, did you? Bernardo's? Bernardo's, that. Uh. You know about that? But now, obviously, got that outfit from. Is that a press conference, lad? Not the races. Uh huh. Oxfam. Peaky blinders. <laughs> well, we are in Birmingham. Um, Dennis, have you still got the uh, the plan to end the year as the as the best super bantamweight in the country? That's what you've talked about. Yeah, definitely. Listen, I, I think I've got to prove it now. Um, I've got to prove it. There's no point in saying it. I'm gonna let me me hands are talking now. Really, no point in keep talking about it. Saturday night is the best you'll ever see me. Trust me. Um. And I'm absolutely buzzing for it, to be honest with you. This year is my year. Well, your hands are going to do the talking on, on Saturday night. What are your hands going to be saying to Brad Strand? I have to wait and see, Dev. I'm going to have to wait and see. I'm not going to say too much, as I said. Because he ain't saying much back. You know, I don't want to take the piss, but <laughs> he, don't, he ain't saying too much back. So, Saturday night, listen, when the best man win, he's an unbeaten fighter for a reason. You know, he, he's a good fighter. And um, I wish him all the best. And, um, yeah, that's all I've got to say. Brad, any final message to Dennis McCann? No message, Dev. No message? Okay, receive I've got one thing. <laughs> the cameraman asked me, he said, would you, have a, would you have a point with Dennis after the fight? No way, he reckons. I said, I'd have one with you. What? The, the cameraman said, uh, would you have a point after the fight with Dennis? Would you have a drink with him? He said, not a point, a drink. He reckons, no way. Well, I've left you I'd, have, I'd have one with you. I don't, I'll buy you one, no problem. I don't, I don't drink. I'll, bu- I'll buy you one, no problem. Well, drinks are on Dennis McCann. Uh, Frank, 
<laughs> it's a great fight. There's, there's good chemistry between these two uh, unbeaten guys. Uh, it must be mouth-watering for you. I think it's bad chemistry. But um, look, both Queensbury fighters, they've both done everything that's been asked of them in their careers. And uh, this is, I think it's going to be a cracker, this fight. There's no doubt about it. And uh, you know, I can't wait to see it. And um, I just feel that... And it's not yet, and I, and I say this, it's not the end of the world for somebody who loses a fight. It's how you lose but the winner of this fight is going to go on to a, for a really big fight this year. There's no doubt about it, and we will make sure that happens. But this has got fight written all over it. You're going to get something special. We need a, so a Saudi money next <laughs> after this fight. You want some Saudi money? Some Saudi dollar. I'm going to pay you in Saudi money. <laughs> the equivalent, right? <laughs> Rupees. No, you're going to get the equivalent in Saudi money. Don't worry about that. <laughs> there we have it. There we have it. Brilliant fight between... Might, or, or pesos. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Let's keep things moving. We've got a bit of a sizzler at super middleweight. Zach Parker and Tyron Zoiger. Zach Parker, resurgent, looking to challenge for a world title on his route to do so. But in front of him, he's got a former world champion at his weight division in Tyron Zoiger. Uh, Tyron, I'm, I'm hoping you can understand me. I, I hope you can. I, I think you, that's, that's good, a little bit. Um, tell us how your, how your training has gone. It looks like you've been training very hard for this fight. Um, hello, um, my English is uh, not the best, but uh, I, I wasn't uh, long at school, so I try my best. And my training camp was uh, very nice. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Um, I saw a video go out on your Instagram the other day, which had you appearing as a tiger, and you'd uh, kind of superimposed Zach Parker's face on, on, on someone. You were chasing him around. Can you t tell us about that at all? I can't tell you uh, uh, much about it. It's uh, very much shit inside my head. <laughs> and uh, we always do some dumb shit, and I think it's funny. Uh, Zach, let, let me bring you in here, because you didn't seem to find it that funny. Oh. No, I just think, um, obviously, everyone's got the way of dealing with stuff, and... Uh, Obviously, he wants to put a few things out on social media, but obviously, we've got a fart on Saturday night, and we'll see, how, see what he comes with. And you two, you know each other from, uh, from back in the day where you were both promoted by the same uh, promoter, and I understand there was some sparring, but Zach, we spoke about that, and you said he didn't want the smoke. Tell me more about that. Yeah, um, obviously, I went over to Germany to uh, spar him, and um, meant to do three eight rounds, and did six rounds the first day, and then... I just had a holiday for the rest of the week because I didn't want to spar anymore. So, I don't know. Obviously, he said he hurt himself or something. So, I just don't think he wanted it. Tyron, is that right? Did you not want to spark Zach Bar uh, <laughs> spar uh, Zach Parker? I said it in an uh, interview. I don't know much about it. So, I don't think uh, he beat my ass. But maybe he knocked me down and I don't know anything. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I have no... Um, I, I, I don't know much, no memories uh, about the sparring. What do you know about Zach Parker? Is he, is he a good fighter? Do you rate him highly? I hope so. I hope, uh, I hope we, we will have a tough fight and a nice fight. So it's funny. Zach, let me get your, uh, your prediction for this one then. Yeah, obviously he's a good fighter. Um, former world champ, like I said, I've only, only lost once to Rockefeller and... and see what Rocky Fielding went on to do. He went and boxed Canelo straight after. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to a really hard fight, but nothing, nothing but a Zach Park win and uh, hopefully get another knockout. And Torum, this will be your, your last chance to speak to Zach Parker before, before Saturday. Anything you wish to say to him? I hope we drink some beers after the fight. <laughs> he wants to drink beers after the fight. Uh, Zach, is, are you good with that, beers after the fight with Torum? I don't, I don't get, even get that either. He just wants to party, doesn't he? So, yeah. Um, get a knockout and then I'll have a beer with you. I drink for you. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, um, Zach Parker's on, on the road back to, to where he wants to be. Tyron Zoiger, former world champion. Tee this one up for us. Well, I mean, they're, they're two quality fighters. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're in the sort of just nearly the best in the world, aren't they? And that's what, what they'll be looking to get back into, to get a, a world title fight. And for Zach, this is, uh, 
This is his, his moment. He comes through this. He, it, I'm telling you, if he comes through this, his next fight will be a cracker. But he's got to do it, and he knows, he knows it's a, a tough fight. And, he, and as much as they might have a beer afterwards, if he wins the fight, he'll be on the champagne, I promise you. That's where we'll be. That It's a big moment for him, and Tyrone's uh, his record speaks for himself. You know, he's a, he's a quality, quality fighter. Uh, he's, he's fought British fighters and, you know, one loss against one and beat the other one. So we're, uh, we're expecting a real competitive fight again. It's going to be a good fight. I mean, all these fights are all competitive fights. They've all got a story, every one of them. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the Zach Parker camp, you know that, and we're looking, we're looking to... Looking for him to come through this, as I say, and set something up which will be, which everybody will be delighted with when they see it. But it's got beaten first. Good stuff, Frank. Well, you talked there about how all of these fights have got a story. There is a very compelling story in the heavyweight division: the return of the juggernaut Joe Joyce, who was destined for the very, very top. He seemed to be heading there until he ran into Gilles Zhang, but now it's the it's about the comeback, and he's got Cash Ali in front of him on Saturday night former IBF European champion. Now, Cash, I'm going to come to you first. We spoke a few weeks ago. You talked about how there's a return of the Ali era coming to the, uh, to the heavyweight division. Just hours away now. Tell us how you're feeling heading into this fight. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I just want to thank God I've got this opportunity. You know, I'm healthy. I'm, healthy. I'm here. I'm ready to, uh, ready to roll. For so long, Joe Joyce was seen as the toughest fight in boxing. Is it still? To be honest, whether he got knocked out or not, I'm, for me, I'm, I'm ready for the best Joe Joyce. Do you feel like it's a good time to fight him? We'll find out Saturday night. Why do you think he chose you? You know, maybe that's their problem if they're looking over, if they're looking uh, past me. But, you know, that's, uh, that's a big mistake. With them. If they are, if Joe, if you've not trained properly, if you're looking past me, you made a big mistake. Okay. <clears throat> All righty then. Well, let's get it down on Saturday. Let's, let's fight. I'm, I'm ready. You're ready. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Saturday, we're going to find out. Hope you've not been quitting no corners after I beat you. I don't want to hear no excuses or they overlooked me. I didn't train right. You know, it looks like after that Zhang fight, put a bit of a timber on. Hope yeah, yeah. Here, it's, it's Christmas. I had, had, had a good, um, yeah. good Christmas turkey and... Like spuds, a few, uh, as well. few sprouts and that. Yeah. What else? Huh? Gravy. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. Maybe some, yeah. some turnips, parsnips or something. Yeah. What <laughs> drinks did he have with that? Huh? What drinks did he have? Cool, you're a bit nosy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> just asking, just asking. <laughs> uh, I, I don't remember. I'd... Yeah. Yeah, you don't remember because you had maybe far too many. Maybe. It won't stop me, though, from knocking your ass out. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see Saturday. Okay. You know, you, they pick the we wrong man see. at the wrong time for you. Everyone you will be watching. Right, man. Go on, carry on. Sorry. Say, speaking to the market, I can't. Sorry, what did you say? I said, for you, they pick the wrong guy at the wrong time. But for me, I'm the right man at the right time because I'm going to beat you. Okay. Well, let's fight and talk. Let's, uh, let's have it. Yeah. Fight, fight and talk indeed. Um, Joe, <laughs> Joe let, me just, uh, let me just pull you up on this. You, um, you talked about in preparation for this fight with Cash Ali here, you said you've been watching Resident Evil films. Can you, can you just explain that one to me? Yeah, because there's obviously a lot of biting and like you, you, when you get bit, it's like it's not, um, you know, you turn into a zombie, so you <laughs> tend not to get hit and, you know, like uh, you want to double tap. So that's what I'm going to do Saturday night. Yeah. You know, it's a fight, is what it is. Get ready. <laughs> Cash, do you, do you feel like maybe the chin has been cracked of Joe Joyce now? You know what? It's heavyweight boxing, regardless if you got knocked out by Zung or not. Yeah, he got knocked out twice. But even if he didn't get knocked out by Zung, heavyweight boxing, one shot, the party's over. You know, I believe I've got... They might be underestimating me, but I know I can punch. That's one thing for sure. And I can hurt him. He's a big man, he's experienced. But... You know, I, I know I can hurt him. Just like he's hurt people, but it's boxing. But at the same time, I believe I rely on my boxing ability, my skills, my ability, my agility, my movement. 
you know, I might even go South Point in this, but you've had enough practice with Zili Zanga, ain't you? Yeah, I know. I t- I tell me about it. <laughs> but, you know, I'm an experienced guy and I've, you know, I've dealt with defeat in the amateurs and I've come back and I'm still the most uh, decorated amateur from, G- well, heavyweight from GB. And um, I aim to get back in the fray and ha- have a good fight with yourself. And, um, yeah, let's, let's see how it goes. Get Get a nice win and then... Oh, there's plenty more fights, but I'm not overlooking you. Like I've shared the ring Good. with you, sparring, so I, I know what to expect, and I think I, I believe in myself, and I believe I can beat your ass. Yeah. I'm, uh, oh, you remember that we sparred? I'm sure you said, yeah, you don't remember sparring me. So that just shows me how much you're overlooking me. Yeah, no, I, I didn't remember at that, that particular moment. I was kind of put on the spot. I, I, I don't know where my head was at. I, yeah, where, I, where was your head at? Huh? Where was your head up? Where's your head at? <laughs> you know that tune? That's, yeah, we'll we'll that's, that's what you'll be uh, hearing when I knock your ass out. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see Saturday here. We're here. Whether I beat your points or knock you out, I'm getting the win and that's it. All right, Cash, l- let's just get a final message from you to Joe Joyce and we'll get one back. <laughs> let's go. All the best, may the best man win. On Saturday, I'm putting everything into it and I'm going to get the W. Over to you, Joe. Um, yeah, may the best man win, which will be me. And I'll, when I knock you out, then I'll carry on. And I'll show everyone that I'm still here and I'm still dangerous and I'm going to be successful. Frank, a, a big moment in the career of, uh, of the juggernaut, a very game and lively opponent here in Cash Alley as well. Give us your thoughts on this fight. It's a good fight. It's, uh, using that phrase again, it's a jeopardy fight, isn't it? And uh, for Joe, it's his massive opportunity to get himself back in the mix again, which he wants to do. And, you know, the heavyweight divisions, in, other than the two guys at the top, Tyson and Usyk, all the other, most of the others have, have, have experienced a loss and come back from losses. You know, uh, for example, Joe Parker, who Joe stopped, he's on a roll of five wins now, beating the guy that beat Joe. So anything can happen in this division. And, and I agree with what Cash says down there. One punch, one big punch can make the difference. So on the night, where's that big punch going to come from? And who's going to get the victory? Let's go! Let's go, Joe. I'm ready you know, to rumble. And Cash will be looking to You're getting chin checked cash by in. Cash. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, it's all there to be done. As I say, that, you know, again, it's, uh, it's a fight and it's got some, some serious implications for the winner and for the loser. Great stuff. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Cash Ali. Very much looking forward to that fight on Saturday. Well, we have an IBO World Super Bantamweight Championship on the line between Liam Davis, the unbeaten Liam Davis and Eric Robles Ayala here. Um, Eric, I'm going to come to you first. You must have, uh, well, one, a translator. I think you do. You must have some happy memories of the UK. You, last time you were here, you beat Lee McGregor. Dice que tienes buenas memorias del Reino Unido de la vez pasada que viniste y le ganaste a McGregor. Así es, tengo muy buenas memorias y estoy muy agradecido con el equipo de Liam Davis por esta nueva oportunidad de volver a, a estas tierras. Este, pues es un honor para mí volver este, y pues eh, estoy pues agradecido con ustedes. He says, of course, I have good memories from, from my last fight in the UK and I'm very grateful to Liam Davis for giving me the opportunity to come back again to the UK for another fight. And how does Liam Davis compare to Lee McGregor? No puedo compararlos hasta que esté en el ring con Liam. No puedo comparar a un boxeador con el que ya peleé con otro con el que no he peleado. Este, esa pregunta será para después de la pelea. He says, I cannot compare a fighter they already fought with with another fighter that I haven't fought yet. That's a question for after the fight. And you've been sparring Nayoa Inoue as well. Um, how did that go, and what confidence did you get from that? Me fue muy bien, fue una experiencia muy bonita y este muy motivante. Este estar con el campeón, con el mejor libra por libra de de mi de mi peso, bueno de todos los pesos. 
este, aprendimos muchas cosas, nuevas técnicas, nuevos movimientos. Este, es un peleador que pega como un... Es un super gallo que pesa como un ligero. Este, eso siento que nos, nos ayudó a asimilar mejor los golpes en la división de super gallos. Este, y, y también eh, he hecho sparring con, con, Oscar, con Oscar Valdés, con que es un peso más grande también. Este, son cosas que, que me han ido este, eh, forjando. Well, he says that um, it, it was great doing sparring with Inoue. Uh, uh, it was an honor to be with one of the best pound for, fa pound, for pound fighters of the world. Uh, he learned new moves, new techniques from, from him. And uh, he also did some sparring with Oscar Valdez, who is also a, a la super fight fighter. And uh, those, these things are just helping him uh, make, uh, be a better fighter. Okay, thank you. Let's bring in Liam Davis. Um, says uh, your, your man here says he's learned some tips from uh, Naoa Inoue. Uh, how does that sound? He's going to need them Saturday. What are your thoughts heading into this fight? It's a big moment for you, IBO world title on the line, uh, biggest fight of your career so far. Yeah, it's a great challenge, looking forward to it. I feel like it's come at the right time. I've um, proven myself to be the best in Britain and now I'm looking to move forward. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I had my debut in Birmingham, Holiday Inn, four years ago, now fighting for the IBO world title. Four years later in Birmingham, so it uh, just shows hard work, dedication, can get you anywhere. And when Mexicans come over to the UK, especially around these sorts of weights, they tend to do bad things to, to our fighters. Uh, how can you ensure you're not going to fall victim? What makes you different? Some things are meant to be for some people in life, and uh, this is for me. It's been a long journey. Uh, Two ma uh, one man with two arms and two legs ain't going to be able to stop me. So I wish him luck. Thanks for coming. Happy to be here. It's a great fight. I've took the biggest fight out there again, as he's had great wins with McGregor last time. But I'm just different, and I think people are going to watch me Saturday night and say, this is the guy. You think you can stop this man? I believe I can knock anyone out. Do you feel by knocking out Inoue's sparring partner, it sends a bit of a message around the world? It doesn't matter to him. Like, Inoue is just irrelevant. You mentioned a man, doesn't really matter. Don't know how the sparring's gone. He's obviously good sparring for him. Um, he seems ready. I'm ready. And Saturday night, we're going to have a war. All right, let me uh, come to Eric. Eric, can we just get your prediction for this fight? How is this going to go? Eh, va a ir México 2, eh, Reino Unido 0, como pasó con Lima Gregor. He says it's going to be Mexico 2, UK 0, just like last time with McGregor. <laughs> Your response, please, Liam. We're going to see, I ain't no McGregor. Más <laughs> fácil. Yes, you're taller, maybe. <laughs> I'm better looking. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, Liam. Let's bring in Frank Warren here. IBO world title on the line for Liam Davis, uh, a career that you've really got behind the last few years. Big moment for him. Do you know, the, the card gets better and better as you're sitting here with the guys. I mean, it's just such a fantastic fight card. But Liam's done everything that's been asked of him, and he's done it in style. There's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, this is... Uh, get another step up in some ways for him. Um, but if anybody can do it, it's him. He's a very capable, capable fighter. He's done it 15 times now. He's won, was it, three of the major belts onto the IBO now. This is, a, this is a great opportunity for him to do it. And I think what he just said, he sends a message out to everybody if he comes through it against a good fighter who we all know from being over here before when he beat Lee McGregor. So there's the form line there. You, can, you see what you've got in front of you, and it's his moment in time to show what he's all about. And up to now, he's done that in spades. 
He certainly has. Just quickly before we move on, uh, Dennis, Dennis McCann, I noticed you've actually got the same haircut now as Liam Davis. Has, has he inspired you? Has something happened there? Uh, he ain't the only fellow who's got a bald head, has he? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> something about uh, Liam Davis being bald. But, but you didn't have this hair last time. You both had more hair. I know. I know what you do. Baldy, baldy, as they say, isn't that? Baldy, baldy. <laughs> Cat, my, my old coach used to call, keep calling him baldy, and now I'm baldy myself. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, Eric. Let's move on to the British Middleweight Championship WBA Continental title on the line as well. Brad Pauls and Nathan Heaney. Nathan Heaney making the first defence of his British title against a very game opponent here in Brad Pauls. And Brad, I'm going to start with you here. I, I saw a post on your Instagram. You had that English title over your, uh, over your shoulder and you had like Southern Area, tick, English, tick, British, pending. What, what is the mindset heading into Saturday? Um, yeah, strong mindset. It's the biggest fight of my career. And I love the traditional route in boxing. I love the southern area. I love the English and British. It's probably the most difficult route. Um, and it's the final box to tick, uh, the hardest box to tick, which is why the British is so credible and why I like it so much. Um, so, yeah, everything I've got Saturday night. I've heard you talking about making history for Cornwall. I've heard you talking about this being your dream belt as well, the British title. Tell me more about that. Um, there's just not many Cornish boxers. I'm a bit of a rare breed. They're all surfing and playing rugby, and I picked boxing. Here I am fighting for the British title 21 years later. Um, and, yeah, there hasn't been a British champ from Cornwall since Bob Fitzsimmons, which was 120 years ago. Um, and it'll be massive history for Cornwall on Saturday night. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let me bring in the defending champion, the hitman here, Nathan Heaney. Now, hearing these comments, hearing... Uh, Brad talk about making history for where he's from, hearing him talking about the dream belt right in front of you. He sounds like you before you fought Denzel Bentley. Yeah, absolutely no difference. It's, particularly when you come from cities outside of, say, Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, where there's, there's so many British champions and world champions that come from them cities. And in a place like <coughs> Stoke on Trent, like I was the third British champion. Obviously, he wants to become the second one. It's, yeah, it's, there's no difference. No difference at all. Have you had to sort of pretend you're not the British champion, like, to keep that kind of, that hunger? It, it, it's strange. I have to remind myself that I'm the British champion because I, 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 see, I, I view myself in that way anyway. I'm always striving to be better anyway. But, yeah, the, the fact of the matter is when we step in that ring on Saturday night, that ball gets taken from me anyway. And at the end of the result, whatever the result is, is whether I get it back or I lose it. So, uh, technically, it doesn't, it doesn't exist at this moment in time for me. Over 2,000 tickets sold, 450 deliveries for this one as well. It sounds like things are going very well in the Nathan Heaney world. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the events are always fantastic when, when, Stoke, when the Stokies and everyone are there. Uh, it's a massive event. Make no mistake, we're, we're headlining on a massive card. That it's going to be packed out in there. The atmosphere is going to be incredible. And yeah, the, my, Stoke just backed me out as they did from day one, from the King's Hall to now, obviously. The, world, the Resorts World Arena. Well, Brad, I think you got booed in your last fight. You're such, such a nice guy, but you got booed in, in your last fight for the first time. Well, he's done over 2,000 tickets himself. You're going to get booed again. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, it was like destiny getting booed for the first time in my last fight. Um, I quite enjoyed it in a weird way. Um, I fully understand I'm going to be the villain on Saturday night. It's absolutely fine with me. I've got 151 Cornish coming up. It's got nothing on Nathan's 2000, but I'm sure they'll be noisy. Um, and it's all energy, and it's how you use it. And I'm going to use it in my favour and just and give it everything I've got. The sole loss that you've had in your career has been to Tyler Denny. He's in the same camp as Nathan Heaney, that BCB camp. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because I guess he could be kind of giving him little tips and tricks here and there. How do you feel about all of that? Yeah, I, I guess so. But it's... They're completely different fighters and they box different. Like, I was sparring Bentley last week and I couldn't really take tips off him because we don't box anything alike. Um, yeah, Denny was my first loss and it was a massive, massive lesson learned. I've improved and come back and added to my camp and I think everything for a reason because that has set me up perfectly for Saturday night. Well, Nathan, what's, what's the key to you winning this fight then? What's that, sorry, Dad? What is the key to you winning this fight? Just applying myself my attributes as a fighter apply myself and just listen to Steve Woodvine and then that should hopefully sort out anything I need to do. 
And Brad, they call you the Nuki Bomb. If that Nuki Bomb lands on Nathan Heaney, how does this fight play out on Saturday? Um, yeah, I think I have the power to hurt most middleweights, all middleweights. Um, I just feel like if I stick to my game plan, um, listen to my coach, like Nathan said, and apply my strengths, um, it's going to be a great fight. I think the styles are going to gel quite well, actually, and I think the crowd's going to love this one. Um, I'm not going to back down. I ain't going anywhere, so um, I'm sure the fans will love this one. Nathan, it feels like every fight that you go in now, you're kind of, you still haven't had that big night at Stoke, but you're like jeopardising it every time, taking hard, hard fights. Jack Flatley, Denzel Bentley, and now this man here. Yeah, made a mistake. Like the last, the last fight, you have to put yourself in terms of the mentality that to go into that fight. No one gave me a, a chance to even survive three rounds, let alone win the fight. But still, in the biggest crowd that I had in Manchester, walked out to them, did what I did, and obviously put put a great performance on, and then obviously won the British title in a convincing fashion. It's just, it's one of them, like every fight that we go, we step up a little bit more, and the fights get harder. But but yeah, it's just for me just to win, that, that's it. You expecting a hard fight? I expect a very, very well-prepared fighter, but like Steve said, the minimum expectation is that you are in incredible fitness and incredible shape. So it's how our styles, like you said, the stars might work together well. It might make a great fight. But obviously, we won't know that until the night. But we're both very ready. Thank you very much. Um, Brad, i just got one final one for you. I, I watched an interview where you talked about how Nathan Heaney is actually always a fight that you fancied. Uh, and then the phone rang, and it was like you're, you're fighting him. What is it about him that you sort of fancied stylistically? Um, yeah, I, I respect Nathan. I respect the way he's done everything. He's worked his way small hall up to his position now, which is um, commendable. You've got to give him credit on his last performance. Um, but even before the, the Bentley fight, I just seen things in him that I feel like I could capitalise on, I feel like I could beat. Um, not that I don't rate him as a fighter at all. I do massively, but I just feel like there's aspects I could apply my strengths and, and capitalise. So... Yeah, um, massive respect. There's not going to be no beef here, Dev. I know you like the beef, but um, made the best man win Saturday night. Uh, no beef from you as well, Nathan. I'm no, no. Right. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great fights, great fights. Frank, uh, a fantastic fight. First defence for, for Nathan Heaney of his British title here and a very game opponent in Brad Pools. Look, again, it's got the ingredients of a fantastic fight. They're both superbly prepared for the fight, both very confident. I spoke to both Nathan and Brad. Both fancy their chances, and I think you're going to get a, a, a classic. I really do. The atmosphere is going to be electric, um, and it's going to be out who, who imposes himself on the, in this fight. For me, who imposes himself, who gets who gets really going fast, who can take command of the, the ring, and that in itself is going to be interesting that for me it's going to be anyway interesting to see who, who 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 does that but no doubt about it you're going to get a classic styles make fights and these styles will make a fight there we have it so many great fights we've spoken to everyone up here now we're about to get some photos some face off some i'm really really looking forward to we will be live from 6 30 on saturday night from the resorts world arena in birmingham actually an hour before that on the queensbury youtube channel we'll be live at 5 30 for ezra taylor challenging for the commonwealth silver light heavyweight championship so a real stacked night of boxing on saturday the magnificent seven ride again stick around for some face offs and there's only 260 tickets left. So you better buy them quick if you want to come see it. Otherwise, TNT, and you're going to get a classic, classic fight night, I promise you. Great stuff. Thank you very much. changes.
the implying that perhaps he had a little bit more. You can see Frank Warren on screen. Brad Pauls spoke very well. Talk about making history for Cornwall. Big moment for him in his career. It's our press man there, Mr. Matt Rich, just leaving the screen, who actually looks like a, an absolute ringer for, for Brad Pauls. And the magnificent seven ride again. Here's Pierce Big Bang O'Leary, WBC International Super Lightweight Champion. Havanis Martirosian taken to the stage now as well. Two unbeaten Super Lightweights. Terrific fight this with plenty on the line. He heard Pierce O'Leary there talking about how he would happily take a fight with Adam Azim, Dalton Smith. He believes he is the man on these shores at 140 pounds. Cracking fight that Saturday night, Pierce O'Leary for Vanis Martirosian. Martirosian's first fight outside of Belgium, 16-0. Now you can see on the screen Ethan James, Owen Cooper, two unbeaten welterweights. Used to share a room together as amateurs. Share a ring on Saturday night. Seems to be a bit of back and forth there. Was Ezra Taylor, who we'll be hearing from very, very shortly. He was just checking the mic and dropping a few bars. Um, but Ezra, look, now you're here, let's uh, let's talk through what we're seeing. Now, obviously, we're going to talk to you about your fight. You've got a big fight coming up Saturday mm. as well. Just um, talk through some, some of these fights here. I mean, Dennis McCann and Brad Strand, that was good fun up there. They, they've got a, a good, or as Frank said, a bad chemistry. Yeah. Do you know what? I like Dennis, man. He's got a bit of a different aura about him. No, uh, his opponent's game as well to be honest um, um, I think I've seen him a few times I feel like this is like a good 50-50 fight um, and as you can see they're, they're facing off now and there's a bit of pull and a bit of stick and as you can see they're even just talking about it now so I, I want to tune into this myself get my get my belt get it out of the way and then uh, sit down and maybe have some higher words on Dennis <laughs> on Dennis is a court <laughs> well Dennis McCann has now uh got rid of the Haribos. There was a video that went out across social media. He threw the Haribos in the bin. He said this is a new menace in 2024. New haircut, no Haribos. And he's got Brad Strand in front of him on Saturday who, he's unbeaten himself. He's out of that Everton Red Triangle gym. He's with Nick Ball. He's with Andrew Kane, the McGrails, Bomber Brown. They've got a great setup up there at the moment and he comes into this with plenty of ambition. Brilliant fight that is at Super Bantamweight on Saturday. And Ezra, did, did you see the uh, the video that Tyron Zoiger put out that I referred to at the press conference? I, I didn't, uh, about the Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, know, but um, I kind of get where you're coming from with it. You know, we're fighters at the end of the day, yeah. and you have to be some type of Tiger or a lion, and you're going to be chasing down your opponent. But he seems game. Well, from what I've been hearing through the grapevine, this guy, is, he's actually pretty good. And I, I didn't even know he was a mm. former world champion. But obviously, Zach Parker has the experience and the credentials to, to do the job. I'll be tuning in. Um, intensively because you never know what these guys can do I said it before super middles are basically like heavyweights and you know I've got to keep my eye on that division as well oh, so you're keeping an eye on Zach Parker I keep an eye on both of them oh. <laughs> <laughs> well the video I do encourage all of you to uh, to watch that it is posted on his Instagram page Taron Zoiger he's sort of tormenting Zach Parker Zach Parker's face is superimposed on someone wearing pyjamas and Tyron Zoiga comes along as a tiger and is kind of chasing him around the town. It's, uh, it's quite the watch. And this should be quite the watch as well. Heavyweight action, the return of the juggernaut Joe Joyce against Cash Ali. Both had plenty to say at the press conference. Some amusing exchanges, some awkward exchanges, as you always expect with Joe Joyce. Of course, man. Hey, you can't, you can't knock Joe's flow. <laughs> he's just different. <laughs> he's just different. But you know what? Cash Ali, he looks like he's gay, man. I've been in the camp and I've been seeing him um, spar. He's come over to spar Fraser Clark and he looks game. So, um, 
could be a banana skin, but it could be a big comeback for, for Joyce to get back in the mix. Well, it's very, very interesting because generally, Cash Ali has been seen as a step down for, for Joe Joyce. Of course, he's going to be after, you know, Gilles Zhang mm. and the likes of Joe Parker. But those within boxing, the likes of Andy Lee, are really talking up Cash Ali's chances here. They're saying it's not just a comeback warm-up fight for Joe Joyce. It's a proper fight. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And uh, Cash Ali is in game for it. And I think he understands uh, uh, the magnitude of what this could also propel him to as well. Um, and I don't think he's going to get an opportunity like this in a long time. So he's got to take it with both hands. Well, big opportunity for Liam Davis as well. IBO World Super Bantamweight Championship on the line. You can see El Terrible, Eric Robles Ayala. And that nickname, El Terrible, I mean, that used to be Eric Morales. And he was pretty, pretty good. If, if, if this guy is anything like Eric Morales, Liam Davis could have a hard, hard night on Saturday. 100%. But you know what? Big up Davis, man. I like that guy. And um, he, he always comes to fight. He really brings intent to, to his fights. Um, I don't know too much about his opponent, but I already know that. Liam's going to give it all he's got and, you know, um, God willing, that's, that's enough for him. Just takes hard fight after hard fight after hard fight. And, and actually, I could be talking about Nathan Heaney there as well, going from Jack Flatley, Denzel Bentley, and now Brad Pauls. And this wasn't a mandatory, this is just someone that Heaney chose. And it's a hard fight against Brad Pauls. Yeah, it's good, man. Do you know what? I rate Nathan Heaney, man. Um, I think people didn't really uh, respect his, his, his craft. And after that Denzel Bentley win, you're going to have to, regardless if you want to or not. Um, he's a nice guy, likeable guy, sells at uh, arenas, so it seems. Um, and yeah, his opponent um, has an opportunity to, to do something great as well, so that'll be a good fight too. That will be a good fight. I think that's all of the, uh, the face-offs done there. No animosity, as expected, between Nathan Heaney and, uh, and Brad Paul. Two mm. very likeable, lovely guys, really. Very nice guys, man. Very nice and very... Uh, respectful to each other and you know what sometimes boxing needs a bit of that but we also need a bit of the other stuff as well you need a bit of the other stuff I, I like a bit of everything I, I quite enjoyed uh, Joe Joyce and Cash Ali at that press conference I mean mm. Cash Ali just kind of listed all of the things that he believes that Joe Joyce ate at Christmas yeah I don't know where <laughs> that was going I don't know what street that was going down but it was interesting to hear but again that's that other stuff you need to throw in the, the concoction you know yeah. to make a, a good press conference man it was good it was good I enjoyed it and what about yourself? You are in action on Saturday. Uh, biggest fight of your career as well because you can pick up that Commonwealth Silver title. Talk to me. I will be picking up that Commonwealth Silver title, man. Like, I, this is destined for me. And you know what? I'm happy that um, Queensbury and Andy is able to just like, squeeze me on this show. It's a magnificent seven, but it slid, <laughs> slid me on there. Now it's eight, and now I'm fighting for a title too. So it's good to get the experience in terms of uh, fighting for a title, check weights, all these things that I'm not really aware of that I'm learning on the job but um, Saturday I've already done the learning so now it's time to enjoy it I'm so calm I'm really ready to just enjoy myself um, there's literally minimal pressure on me man because I've done everything I need to do so Saturday I'm looking forward to it everyone keeps saying oh yeah I'm looking forward to your fight no I'm looking forward to my fight you know so so yeah man Saturday um, tune in I don't know if it's on TV on the stream but I've got a job to do man I don't even think about them things I'll just go in there and just get it cracking You'll be live on the Queensbury stream. I think I'm commentating on your fight. And Ooh. last time I commentated on your fight, you, you got a, a you know knockout with like seven seconds to go. You know what happened, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> this is a ten rounder. I show you ain't going that. I can't be telling you what rounds. I'm like I said, I'm just gonna enjoy it. But right now, I heard a lot of people saying on the on the stage, oh, um, you know, if the best version of me comes, then I'll be able to. The best version of me is here. There's nothing else to say. I've got nothing else to do over there and just enjoy myself. I may wait like a professional. I'm enjoying it, man. It's my passion. I'm destined for this. So Saturday, I ain't got long now. Like you say, right? You got hours to go. I got hours to go to 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 go and just soak it all in and then just be victorious in the best way possible. Just just tell me quickly, what, what do you know about your opponent? It, it looks like he hits very hard. I just know he's a southpaw. That's all I care for. I take care of myself, man. You can put anyone in there, bro. Go put Canelo in there and see what happens to him Saturday night. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't business about what they do. I just care about what I do. And then that's enough to be victorious for me. Well, let's have a chat with Liam Davis. Ezra, feel free to Stand stay on, with bro. us because you can, yeah. you, you can talk. You, you like the sound of that. He's talking about, I don't care. Stick Canelo in front of me. I don't care. It sounds like you. Yeah. Kill or be killed, man. you got to go in there with that mindset. Yeah. With savages and um, big Ezra's on. On Come job, on. I love it. You know how it goes. <laughs> Are you on job? I mean, this is a tough, tough guy. El, El Terrible. The last El Terrible was Eric Morales, and he was very, very good, Liam. Yeah, you know how I roll. 
I turn up with bad intentions, always come and uh, do the business. Saturday night, I'm going to become IBO world champion. And put two men in there, no, no one's going to stop me, man. I'm here to get what I set out to do from knee high. And good luck to Rob Les. He's, trust me, he's going to need it. How did he shape up to you? You've now actually seen him, you've faced off. What, what did you make of that? Yeah, he seems a nice guy. He seems like, uh, sometimes I seem to fight the ones that are like chirpy, you know what I mean? I have to chirp back, but whether you're nice or he could have been with, giving me attitude, I'm still going to be in there trying to take his head off Saturday night, so I don't mind that. He looks um, up for the fight. I don't want to hear no excuses. He's been sparring the best in the new way. He's had good wins, and yeah, when I win Saturday, I want my credit. You seem to just take hard fight after hard fight after hard fight. If you look at Mark Leach, right? Who wants to fight Mark Leach? Baluta. Who wants to go to, go go to war with Baluta? Not that you went to war with him, but you certainly handled Baluta. And now this guy Robles as well. We've seen what he's done to Lee McGregor. Why do you keep taking these hard, hard fights? There must be easier options out there for you, Liam. Now nah, I'm in this game to be the best, man. I train hard. I dedicate my life to this. Do you know what I mean? So I'm here to mess about. I want to get to the top and uh, achieve my dreams. So yeah, in here I took every fight as it's come. I think sometimes I couldn't believe the fights I was asking for, but look where it's got me, and I carry that attitude and that bit of a chip on my shoulder that I'm the best. Ezra, have you got ratings for Liam Davis? Hey, the ratings sky high, man. He, he carries my energy. I'm telling you, if it's me and Liam versus everyone in the room, you're finished right now. The energy that we have is yeah, it's, it's, it's done. It's done. But yeah, as you as you can see, that's what our fight is meant to be. You know what I'm saying? We've got that tunnel vision. Saturday night, we're both going to perform um, and do the job, do the business, man. We work real hard. I've known Liam anyway as well. I know he puts in the work. So I already know. I ain't got no doubts about him. I definitely have no doubts about me. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens, man. See how, see how it goes on Saturday. Do you have ratings for Ezra Taylor here? Oh, 100%. Like you said, we go way back and yes. um, we spoke, out, become friends through boxing and I'm behind him as much as he's behind me, man. I think he's a great talent and a real force to reckon with, so... Let's, let's have it. Let's have it out, well, man. So, you're not going to fight, though, are you? No, no, no. Right. Right. This, oh, whole, nah, 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 this whole place nah, will come down, mate. This Just whole place will come down point. with that, mate. Goodness We've got too much mate. energy. Um, <laughs> Dennis McCann, uh, same haircut. Thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I need to get a trim. Um, I need to shape up for tomorrow, but... Yeah, here's what it is, isn't it? I'm a handsome geezer. I, I'd be the same. I, I want to get your thoughts on, on his fight as well against Brad Strand because look, uh, no matter where they are right now, they could well be potential future opponents for you down the line. H how do you see that fight? I think it's a good fight, man. And it's a f I see on the running order, it's on a few before me, so I'll be in watching it and I'm looking forward to it. I couldn't tell you a winner, to be honest. If I am leaning one way, it's towards McCann and uh, that's on point, so yeah. Fantastic stuff. Liam, we're going to let you go. We're going to swap you out for, for Big Bang O'Leary. Ezra, just stick around. Stick around. I guess you, I'm going to have to, innit? You, you like to talk. You like I, to talk. I, I must get paid for this, surely. So <laughs> I want to speak to Frank or someone. But yeah. Big Bang, <laughs> how are you, sir? I'm good, mate. How are you? You are good? Very, very good. Are we live? Um, we are live. Nice. We live, yeah. Look, check live. That. That's you. That's the Big Bang. Um, look, it's a tough opponent. It's a Big Bang, but it's a, it's a guy, 16-0. He's, he's coming to he's coming to win probably the the toughest fight of your career so far do you agree yeah most definitely um, listen you can I have, I've got to respect him he's 10 KOs he's got power um, he's, un, he's undefeated so same thing with Lockman when he when before he fought outside of Germany stuff like that he was an undefeated fighter and he was dangerous no one really knew of him when he went to America so I'm taking the same approach as, as, as that as I'm looking at him as the same, the same trip mm. as where Glockman was to most American fighters. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fully focused, I'm fully locked in, and uh, I'm just gonna bring the A game. I, I believe, I truly believe that he's not on the level. Um, so yeah, look, look at the show. You talk about bringing your A game, your A game now. You're up in Liverpool. You're up with Joe McNally. You've got Josh Taylor around you, JJ Metcalf. 
Liam Smith, pl plenty of, of good fighters. Has that kind of sharpened you up a bit more, particularly the Josh Taylor stuff, him being a, a former undisputed champion at your weight? Yeah, I just find that it's elite. That's how we find it. Like, um, my routine is 7 in the morning, I'm up out of bed, train, be on the floor, ready and up at 10 o'clock. Don't go home till about 2. I'd, I'd, I'd have no time to myself. I got the nap, let the body recover. Back from the second session at half four, five o'clock, and I won't get home till about half seven. So I've no time with myself. Like it's literally, it's a full-on job now, and then um, it's pretty much like when I was sparring last week with one of my teammates, Gary, um, Gary Dowling, former um, amateur teammate, and he was giving me some rounds, to help me out. He's got the same style as this guy, aggressive. Um, he probably hits a lot harder as well. So he prepared me very well with a couple of rounds. Um, and obviously then with Beefy, he was he was sitting on he was sitting ringside looking at the spar. So I, I got out of the ring and he was telling me he actually got back in the ring, done a few little stuff with me. And I was just like, small as basic detail, how much effective it is. So take all that into consideration. I was speaking to uh, your manager Francis Warren earlier on, and he talked about how he would happily put you in with Dalton Smith, Adam Azim right now. Yeah, so did my coach. So with Joe, so we all spoke about it as well. We all spoke about those opportunities. So um, look, I'm not overlooking Saturday night, but when it does, when we get the win Saturday night, we push back out in June, and I hope we big huge big fight by the end of the year. A million percent, I want to fight for that big huge fight. Good stuff. Good luck. Big Bang, we will see you at the weigh-in tomorrow. Good Thanks luck. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Big Bang, we're going to swap out Big Bang for uh, <laughs> the hitman, Nathan Heaney. Hey man, do the fist bump. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to say something. Go on. I thought I've got a great physique, but this man, <laughs> I'm telling you, it, under there, mate, it, unreal, mate. It looks incredible shape. Thank right. you, bro. There Appreciate was me it. thinking I was finally getting the recognition I deserve. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about you, mate. Come, yeah, on, yeah. Yeah. Come on, you see it. Um, let, let me just get your thoughts on this. He's got the map of Stoke on his coat. Oh, I mean, come on. That's a legend. Man. That's, that's legendary. Yes, I like that's that. Man, that's didn't even see that, man. Attention to detail. Yeah, yeah. I like it, yeah. man. Yeah. I like yeah, it. Good. It's, good. it's good stuff, man. Nathan, he's been putting in work, man. I've been seeing he's come over. He's been, he's been ready for this fight. Put it that way. I, I'm looking forward to it as well, man. I was saying to Dev, like, the, the, the win over Denzel Bentley was amazing and everyone needs to I think probably give you credit if they don't give you credit I feel like you need to get the credit due to you yeah no, no I appreciate that it's, yeah, it's one of them ones it's just um, like I said before a fight that no one gave me a chance in but, but I performed really well although it was my best performance I still don't feel it's my best ever performance so I still think there's, there's wit areas for me to improve on and get better so I think that's good really because you hate to think right you've hit your ceiling and that's it but I, I do genuinely believe there's a little bit more there for me mm. to give have you stopped watching that fight back now yeah I think <laughs> I watched it every day for about a month <laughs> probably three times a day particularly the highlights I watched it too much but then but then yeah there come a point where I was thinking I need to stop watching this now. it's getting a bit it's getting a bit 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 sick <laughs> but yeah but yeah but no yeah that's I mean that, that form and are you, uh, like, was there a moment where you then started watching Brad Paul's fights, or do you just leave that to coach? No, like I said, with every other fight, I've, I've watched Brad Paul. Paul's, of course, I've liked, but, but I never watched them in too much detail because I just look at the coach just to tell me maybe built under pressure and what happens when they give the gas a little bit. Because that's what matters. Mm. Well, just going to pause you there for a moment. Yeah. We're going to do a bit of sharing mics because your mic has stopped working. Okay. The hitman, just just drop drop the mic. I mean, it's yeah. broken okay, anyway. Man. It would appear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can yeah, jump. You, you, you can bounce. Yeah, yeah, you can bounce. Okay, Ezra Taylor. Um, so yeah, you don't watch Brad Paul. Yeah, so like like I said, for example, Denzel Bentley would have watched me in previous fights, but what he saw on the night in Manchester, he might not have really seen previously. Although I did show glimpses of that in the Jack Flatley fight, it still wasn't the finished article as such. So. It's pointless looking at past performances because they can make improvements. Like Brad Paul's, no doubts would have made improvements since, like you said, the loss to Tyler Denny. I don't look at that too much because Tyler Denny's a southpaw, very awkward and very tricky. So I know I know what he brings. So I don't take too much away from that because that's like an anomaly in terms of that style. But but I have seen him against um, Ryan Kelly, and that was a very close fight, competitive fight, which he won. But yeah, yeah. That, that, but like you say, going back to your question, I will leave that to Steve. But I do watch little bits just to see the characteristics of them. 
for so long the British title was your dream right that that yeah. was the one that that you wanted so much and I've heard about this thing called paradise syndrome where you get to the very top you achieve your dream the thing you want and then you kind of you, you don't know what to do from there Tyson Fury had it when he became undisputed what, what's it been like for you yeah that 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 for me is not the although like I said it was a dream I, I said in the CNC sports little thing that I did just like I don't underestimate what I am now like in terms of my ability but I don't underestimate who I could become either so when you said about the paradise thing I, I still haven't reached that paradise yet the, the paradise is Stoke City do you know what I mean that's the paradise and I know for I know the only way that's ever going to happen is if I keep winning so I've just got to keep doing that the British title was fantastic it was, an, it, it was historic for me City but now it's now now it's time to make a little bit more history when you do eventually get there that fight at Stoke it feels like you're um, you're almost putting hard barriers in the way so like you earn it more is there a bit of that well yeah well I, the last fight I think give me credit to earn that more because you could go there now you could have got yeah gone yeah there before. I, yeah could have, we could have gone there last year couldn't yeah. we like and yeah. to be honest I always envisioned it was going to be Denzel Bentley that I was going to be facing there but now I've always said if you win a British title you never know what you can do in the future and if you're a British champion you can go on to become a world for, to fight for a world title and possibly become a world champion so for me that was that's something I would love to to do in the future and if that was at Stoke it's historic even more so no one's ever fought for a world title from Stoke before so that's my paradise moments as you were saying before 2,000 tickets 450 deliveries best Tash in the game right yeah, now yeah, yeah. to be fair well, there's not many is hey, mate, there? mate, the tash, that, that Tash on now that pitch is dreadful that was I'd just been growing it for about two or three weeks I think which is but yeah, look at but this I, now. But it's better, it's better now. It's yeah. better. My dad, my dad had been ashamed of that one, but this one, I think he'd, <laughs> I think he'd be a bit more proud of this Tash. So, but yeah, the notes, it's there, mate. It's uh, again, son of my father. I'd, I'd say I'd shave it up the, the straight away, but I think we've got the British Boxing Board Awards the day after my fight, so I've got to keep it for that. And then, and then let's just see when my next fight is. If obviously I've got to beat Brad Pauls first, but do all that and let's see what happens next. And the Tash might go. Just out of curiosity, how does uh, Mrs. Heaney feel about the tash? She hates it. Absolutely hates it. She it, she wants to get rid of it. She's like, you look so much younger and so much yeah. better without the tash. But the, the worst thing is, though, I've started to get used to it. I'm always thinking, I look great like it. But, but that's that's delusion for you, that is. So. Nathan, I think you look great. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. I'll see you tomorrow at the wait. Thank you very much, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's swap you out. And we're bringing in... A man who uh, was part of Tyron Zoiger's promotional video the other day in which he was a tiger. He was chasing you around the town. You were just trying to brush your teeth and all sorts. It was a crazy video. I encourage you all to, to watch it. Uh, how you doing? And it was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit weird. <laughs> um, I don't think it's all right to be fair. I don't, I don't know. But, um, yeah, he was, when we just did the face-off, he kept smiling at me. I said, you're just here to party, mate. I'm here to knock you out. So then he just smiled at me. So I'm, here for, I'm just here for business. You, he's a bit of a, an enigma, right? He won the WBA World uh, Super Middleweight title. He had that belt. He lost it to Rocky Fielding. Yeah. He then kind of went went missing for a few years, and only last year he's he's popped up again. Yeah. What, what do you what do you make of him then? Yeah, obviously he's got obviously got disheartened off the got a bit disheartened off the Rocky Fielding loss. But yeah, he's a, he's a he's a good fighter. You're not you're not a world champion for no reason. And uh, Rocky Fielding boxed Canelo straight after that, so. He could have been boxing Canelo, so yeah. Um, I'm just looking for a really good fight, and um, he's been giving it a lot. He's been giving it a lot online, so he's obviously up for it. So it's going to be a good fight for the fans. And what about you? Where, where are you currently in your head? You had that kind of heartbreak against John Ryder. You were yeah. very badly injured in that fight. Couldn't go on any longer. You've bounced back with one win, one good stoppage win. Where, where are you at now? Yeah, I'm feeling amazing. For, uh, obviously got the win just got just, um, the cobwebs off the last, in my last fight and uh, this has been one of the best camps I've ever had um, cut no corners and uh, you can't do against these opponents because he's, he's going to be lively in there and uh, he's going to want to come and win to get wet in my position so yeah uh, I'm, I'm actually feeling unbelievable um, obviously get the weigh-in done tomorrow and then it's all systems go for Saturday night and this fight's super middle it's at 12 stone 2 so just above so it's, it's at the in-between bit um, like I said, I'm I'm game to box super middle or light heavy. I can make both weights, so yeah, 
Um, we'll see what, what's out there for me. Uh, there's a lot of big fights at both weights, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, because I, I remember after your last fight, you were talking about the guys like Anthony Yard, and you know, you've know you certainly got the height, yeah. and you do have to boil down a bit to get to super middle as well, yeah. don't you? you? You feel you can be a force at light heavy? That's it, yeah. Um, obviously, I, I, you want to be the biggest at that weight, um, and uh, obviously... I think I'm big enough for like like heavy, and especially if I if I like aim to that, I can be bigger in different parts of my body. Like obviously, you grow yourself into the weight, um, and obviously after this, we can see what happens. If there's a big fight at light heavy, that's where I'm going to aim to. So you can do both weights. You're a problem. Yeah. That's it, Manny Pacquiao, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Up I and you, down. I think you did eight in the yeah, end, eight yeah. weights. I that's don't know if you got. That's crazy. That yeah, is, yeah, I mean that, that would that would be you boiling down a significant amount or going up to heavy. Yeah, do you yeah. fancy it with Joe Joyce? He was up there. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, he was quite lovely today, weren't he? He, was, had, a lot to, he had a lot to say. It, it was quite funny. It was quite a, an amusing press conference. That's it, yeah. um, let me just get your thoughts on, on uh, the, uh, a couple of other fights on there. I know Nathan Heaney is a man that you've spent a lot of, lot of time with. You've yeah. sparred him many, many rounds as well. He's in tough against Brad Pauls. That's it. It's a good fight. I boxed him as well, you know. OK, I come on. I boxed him in his last amateur fight. I beat him in the seniors. Uh, but yeah, is it, it's a good fight. It's fair. It's, um, that Brad Paul's going to bring it. And he obviously wants to win as well. His British title. It? Every fight at British title is really hard. Um, anyone can say that. Once, once you're there, everyone wants to take your place. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that fight. I'll be, I'll be staying around to watch it. And hopefully Nathan comes through and uh, gets a win. And tell me about your, your weight division, the, the one that you're currently competing in, super middleweight. Super. Obviously, Canelo's got all of the belts tied up. He's, he's doing what, what he wants to do with them, and his next fight is against Jaime Monguia. Uh, tell me about that fight, because, I, you, I mean, you've called out both guys before. Yeah, that's it. Um, obviously, all the belts are tied up in a minute. He just needs to let them go, because everyone else wants to get a belt as well. Uh, but he's like the cash cow, so they're going to do what it, whatever he says. Um, all the, all the organisations, he's get they're getting a lot of money off it off him. Why are they going to give it to someone else if he vacates? So yeah, um, it's going to be a good fight to prepare. He's just beat John Ryder. He's come off a good win against John Ryder. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't see him beating Canelo. Uh, I think for like he's only just come up to this weight, Mungia. He ain't grown into it uh, enough at the minute. And uh, Canelo's been around, hasn't he? He's got them old tricks and that. So yeah, yeah I see Canelo winning. What about you? Does that Pride Park dream still exist? Zach, we were so close. No. We were so close. Don't worry. Ne- either this year or next year, it could still happen. Come on. Good luck to you. I'm looking forward to this fight, and I'll, I'll see you tomorrow Cheers, at, the, uh, nice one. at the weigh-in. That's it. Zach Cheers, Parker, mate. let's swap you out for Brad Pauls. Hello, Brad Pauls. Mic'd up. up, ready to go. And are you ready to go? You've got Nathan Heaney on Saturday night. He's pretty good. He's unbeaten. Denzel Bentley couldn't beat him. Few very very good fighters couldn't beat him. Why can you beat him? Um, because I'm better. To be honest with you, because I'm better. I feel like if I apply my strengths, like I was saying, they are they are better than Nathan's. Even before I was offered the fight, it's a fight I really fancied. Um, I feel in some areas he's very beatable. Um, so let's find out on Saturday. What are those areas that he's very beatable? Top secret. <laughs> That'd be giving away way too much, Dev. How many are there? How many areas are there where he's very beatable? En- enough for me to take the fight like that. And you did say yes to this one straight away, Instantly. didn't you? Did yes. you feel like, I can't believe they've picked me? Was it that kind of Kind, thing? kind of. The situation, obviously, I was the, I was the English champ mm-hmm. and I would have had to defend my English to earn my right for the British to get my mandatory. Um, he just sped up the process by picking me as his voluntary. Um, so it was an easy, yeah, straight away. And you don't get many opportunities at SM Boxing, do you? So. Why, why do you, that there is, Nathan, with yeah. the, the, the map of Stoke on his coat, why, why do you think he has picked you? Um... I don't know. Maybe they think I'm an easy touch. Um, maybe they're trying to build into another fight or something. I think me being the, Eng- I, I think if I wasn't the English champ, they wouldn't have picked me. I think that sets up a nice domestic, domestic fight. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a mistake on their part, in my opinion. A lot on the line here. Obviously, the the British title is, is a belt that you've you say you've been dreaming about for a long time, That's right? Nice belt. Have you uh, imagined those words and the new? Mate, if you was in my gym, this whole camp, that's all we scream at each other. All the way through the sessions, you're dying on the assault bike and the new, and the new. Uh, they'll be the sweetest words I've ever heard on Saturday night, and it will make me a very happy man. A lifelong dream? 
lifelong dream. Um, I've made it vocal, and you must agree that the British is the nicest belt and even nicest looking. When it was on the table then, it was just there, yeah. right out of my reach, just right there. It is the best looking belt in boxing because it's the most credible as well. Were you tempted to just sort of go over and touch it maybe? Just give it a little something. I'm patient, I'll get it Saturday. Oh, great thing to say. Listen, while, while I've got you, let me, because uh, you, you know your boxing, right? You, you watch your boxing. Let me get your thoughts on a couple of other things, particularly Joe Joyce and Cash Ali. That was good fun up there. Yeah. I like the back and forth. Even though I don't um, get involved with the beef, I like the back and forth. Um, yeah, hopefully it's a clean fight on Saturday and there's no biting, nibbling, anything like that. Um, yeah, it's an exciting card, top to bottom. I hope they have a TV in my changing room so I can watch the show. That's a good thing to say. That's a good advert for the show. Yeah, thank well you. done. Thanks. Best of luck to you. I will see you tomorrow, Brad. Thank Balls. you very much, Dad. Appreciate it, mate. Let's see swap tomorrow. you out for the for the menace, Dennis the Menace McCann, who is coming in here. Dennis McCann, how are you, sir? Tell you what, it's a bit chilly. You ain't put no uh, heat on there today. Have no you? heating. No. Well, maybe it's because you got rid of your hair, so you're, you're more sort of susceptible yeah. to getting uh, getting cold. Yeah, maybe, maybe. What did you make of Brad Strand up there? Um, there was a nice bit of back and forth. He was. He said that you were dressed for Cheltenham, uh, amongst other things. T t talk to me. He reckons that uh, he wouldn't see him, see him dead in this suit in Liverpool. I said, the reason why you wouldn't see him dead in this suit is probably because he couldn't afford it. <laughs> What were you saying to him up there? There was a little bit of a uh, little bit of chat. I don't know if we had Frank mic'd up or not. Hopefully the guys did. But what what were you saying? I actually forgot to be honest with you. <laughs> For, uh, I have looked at that mic thing. I've actually forgot. I'm not mind on like. If you had that face off again, what would you say to him? You'd get this, mate. You're fucking getting it. <laughs> Apologies for the language, sorry, sorry. Uh, but, but Dennis, you, you seem in a good place. The uh, the smiles there, and I, I saw you talked about how actually you're making weight easier than ever. Tell me about that. Oh yeah, weight, weight's great, you know. Um, still hungry, I'm not going to lie to you. But yeah, it's all good. Best camp I've had in my whole career. Uh, life's great. It's actually my anniversary today as well. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, anniversary. So. Anniversary of. Married. married oh, for, marriage for anniversary. Year, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, well. Yeah, and you brought her with you today as yeah, well, didn't you? Yeah, life's oh. great at home. Uh, life's life's sort of amazing at the moment. The camp's gone great. I've been in camp since Christmas. Um, yeah, buzzing, mate. Buzzing to get back in the ring. I can't wait, to be honest with you, to showcase my skills. I've been working so, so hard. I've been working ten times harder than, than hard. It's been scary how hard I've been training. New running coach, new new team, new management team, new everything. I've had some, uh, some Cubans over, 13 no 11 knockouts. Uh, unbeaten Cuban, 15-0 uh, French kid, and again a 10-0 uh, kid from Barcelona. So I've had the best band uh, like employed over, you know, thanks to my management, uh, Lee Eaton, uh, for getting them over. And yes, yeah, all, all good, mate. It's all great. And I guess it needs to be because this is a serious, serious fight. I mean, Brad Strand, he's out of that Everton Red Triangle gym, Nick Ball. The McGrails, there's so many great fighters in there, Andrew Kane as well. He's really coming to win. He's got that backing from Liverpool. Of course he is, yeah, but he, he probably ain't as good as any of them, to be honest with you. Um, he's a good fighter, you know, he's a good fighter. I respect him, I do respect him. I've got to sell the fight tonight because he can't sell the fight, could he? Um, but yeah, it's a good fight, you know. He's unbeaten, I'm unbeaten. But I think I'm, a, I'm, a, a, I'm elite, he's nothing better than me. I'm faster, I'm stronger, as I said. I'm a better boxer than him. I can walk him down. I can outbox him if I want to. So you feel like you can win this any way you like? Any way I like, I can win this fight. And I can do 20 rounds. I can, I can do 20 rounds Saturday night. 20 rounds I can fight. Do you think you'll need 20 rounds? No. <laughs> Give us your final prediction, Dennis. Um, I can knock out. OK, thank you very much, Dennis McCann. Looking fantastic. We're going to swap you out and bring thank in you, Ethan James. What's up? Dennis the Menace McCann. Jamie James, do you, do you rate him? Is he is he any good? Very good. He's actually very good. We go way back, me, me and Ethan, way way back. And uh, we go, yeah. So as I said, we go way back for the amateurs and that. And his mom and dad, I love them both as well. I love this guy as well. Come on, man. You're two dads, business. and we're both picking up two more belts on the weekend, man. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. There you go. Tremendous respect, Ethan James. Great to see you, um, Owen Cooper. Nice guy, Ethan James. Nice guy. Not a lot of hostility up there, but a serious fight on Saturday. Yes. Yeah, Big fight for both of us, obviously. We're both undefeated. 
two belts on the line and this, the, these titles could push us in line for British titles or even better. And it is that, isn't it? There's been so many great English champions over the years. It can catapult you to a whole new level having that belt, especially with an unbeaten record to go with it. Yeah, it's, it's a good win for both of our records. Obviously, I'm expecting myself to come, come prepared and give the best performance I can Saturday night. And this win could push me on to big fights. Obviously, we can see what they're doing in Saudi. And we know he's watching because he's, he's picking up fighters and asking them personally to be on their shows. So good performances here, good wins here can put you anywhere. Is it the hardest fight of your career as, as you're looking at it? Yeah, they all are. They all, every fight's been a step up. Back to Ben Fields. Ben Fields was a hard fight. Keenan Wainwright was another hard fight. James Moorcroft, he was, he was another hard fight. They're all step ups, but I've performed to every single one of them and done what I needed to, to get to this point. So now the next man's name my way is Owen Cooper. Have you got an eye on uh, beyond this as well? I mean, British champion, Harry Scarf, you know, Echo Westman, you know, Harry Scarf just beat Echo Westman. Echo Westman is in the Queensbury stable as well. I think he's going to be around this week. Have you, have you got sort of an eye on, on what he's up to? Uh, obviously, I watch, the, I watch all the fights that I could be involved in in the future, but Saturday night's the main, the main point of business now. So Owen's the full focus for Saturday, and then hopefully we can push on to big things after Saturday. And you feel you're hitting harder than ever, Ethan? Yeah, I feel good at, I feel good at this new way. I showed, I showed that I was fit all the way through my last fight. Obviously, moving up to 147 instead of 140 was obviously, I think, a good move. And I think I'm holding my power more, and uh, hopefully we can see it Saturday night. I've seen you with the, the belts that you have won go around Northampton as well. Is, is that the plan, sort of get there as quickly as possible with some new belts? Yeah, hopefully pick up the English, keep my WBO European, get myself on the cobbler's pitch, get another free meal out of it, and... Uh, Go and show them bad boys off to Northampton. Who have you been sparring in this in this camp? Uh, I've got some good sparring. I've got some good good lads in camp within within the gym, and uh, we've got some GB boys, amateur boys jumping in. We had lots of Hugh Maloney. He's an incredible talent in the amateurs. Fast pace, relentless. We've got Charlie Hamilton, who's another amateur of ours. He's small pace coming forward. Ben Vaughan, who's another pro. You'll see him soon. He's doing he's doing very well. And um, mixing it up with the big boys as well, because obviously they're, they're strong and I need to be, be able to mix it up with the big strong boys. So, yeah, camp, camp's been good and sparring's been tremendous. Done plenty of tickets as well? Yeah, sold out of tickets to be oh. fair. So, first time ever selling out of tickets, I don't have to worry about anything. So, yeah, good crowd coming down, about 200. Give us your, uh, your final prediction for this one then. An Ethan James win, as always. As always, thank you very much, Ethan James. Cheers. Fist bump you, I'll take the mic from you as well. And I'll bring in a juggernaut here. My goodness, have you got bigger, Joe Joyce? How no, are you? Oh yes, I'm. I'm still the same height. Still the same height. No, it's like no, you've grown, but I've I've stopped growing now. But no. um, I still am quite a big, uh, large unit. You are indeed. Um, <laughs> how was that up there with Cash Alley? He he seemed to be going through your whole sort of Christmas dinner. You you talked about no, parsnips. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was, I, was, I, can't, I couldn't really remember what I had for di Christmas dinner actually. Like, it's, but yeah, it went went down well and um, obviously fueled my training for the new year. <laughs> What, what did you make of him? He, 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 look, he's, he's come here with plenty of ambition. Sometimes you can see it in a fighter's eyes. Did you see anything in his eyes where you thought, all right, he, he's, he's, he's for real? Yeah, well, I've, I've shared the ring with him, sparred him, so I know what he's got. He's got some good boxing skills and stuff, but I think he's not going to be enough for the juggernaut when I come storming in and um, bashing him up and knocking him out. Have you had any... You know, this, this is the first time in your professional career you're bouncing back from defeat. Ha, has that been difficult? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been difficult, but that's in the past. We're in the present now, which is a present, which is nice. And that present is uh, is Cash Ali on Saturday. Yes, which is uh, in the future. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, he, look, he's a good fighter. And also, there's a comment out there from Andy Lee actually, who talked about this fight, and he talked about how this is not really just a comeback fight for you. It's a fight that Cash Ali could win. They, they are backing him. There are people within boxing who think Cash Ali can cause you real problems on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, he's a good fighter, but like, like all at this, well, it's, heavyweight boxing is like unpredictable. It only takes one shot, so it's, every fight's like a risky fight, but it's, you know, I need to be beating him if I want to go to the next stage and beat like the, you know, the top, top fighters in the division. It feels like this moment in your career, the next few fights are going to be quite important here because it's going to kind of determine how you were remembered from this era as we're kind of almost reaching the end of the era within the next few years. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, there'll be um, a time for like the new wave of heavyweights coming through because, you know, like, but I've still got a lot, lot of time 
I keep on I keep on extending it. I've got yeah, yeah, still yeah. got I still haven't completed my long term goals in boxing and heavyweight boxing. So you know, I need to keep um, keep um, juggernauting on. What do you call it? Stomping on. Yeah. Marching on. Keep juggernauting forward. Yeah, yeah, um, that's it. I saw you put up on your social media at the weekend. Just got a poster. Or I don't know if you designed it yourself. I know you do your art as well. So did you design it? You, you and Joe I, I Parker? I didn't design it. No, no, I no. can't take credit for that. Sorry. <laughs> but it was a nice poster, kind of suggesting suggesting the the rematch between you and Parker. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's got the rematch with Zhang first, and uh, Frank's oh, wow. behind you. Goodness strangling me! Strangling you. you get, get, getting the a other guillotine, rear guillotine. A rear guillotine. Spencer Brown did that to me the other day as well. Have I just got one of those necks? Yeah. yeah, if we think he needs breaking. Yeah. Should we, uh, yeah, should yeah. we fill him yeah. in after, after this? Yeah. <laughs> you hold him. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll hit him. Oh, no, I'll hold him. Yeah, you yeah, hit him. Yeah. 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 Right. Thanks. Uh, looking forward to that, uh, gentlemen. Um, big fight for Joe. I, I, I was talking about how it's going to be kind of his next few fights determine how he's going to be remembered ultimately. Yeah, I mean, it's a horrible thing to say, but you're only as good as your last fight in the public's eyes. Um, and... I know for Joe, I mean, I was watching the, the face off up there. I can see the intensity that's with him and how he's feeling. And he knows he's got to put a great performance in. And if he does that, I've promised him and I will deliver him a big fight. And then it's up to him to go and prove to the world, you know, he he's deserves to be there. And I think he does deserve to be there. Um, you know, this business, especially the heavyweights at the moment, me included, wrote off AJ a couple of fights ago. You know, people were saying they seen better days and so forth. I'm not me. A lot of newspaper journalists, a lot of people say that. And he's got himself back in the mix. Joe Parker, done a job on him. Now Joe Parker's flying. I mean, it's just, it's, it's like a merry-go-round in some ways. But I think the reason a lot of this is happening, because they're all getting fights. It's an active division. And a lot of that's obviously because of the Riyadh season, because of HE and, you know, Saudi, uh, finance from Saudi making this all happen so the heavyweight scene is exciting the heavyweight scene at the moment is waiting for May the 18th biggest fight this century between Tyson and Usyk the winner of that there may, may or probably will be a rematch but then all the guys who are fighting behind them at the moment all those fights that are happening are going to set up for whether the belts fragment, who's going to fight for the vacant titles, or if they don't, who's going to fight the guy who's, the, who's got the belts. So they're all jost jostling for position, and Joe knows his value, he knows what he's capable of doing, and I'm quite sure he's going to get himself back into contention to be there for what for the big, 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 big fight. Well, Joe, let me, let me ask you on that. You, uh, you actually said heading into... Joe Parker's fight with Zhang that you wanted Parker to win you'd be cheering him on you're the only man who stopped Joe Parker and yet that win just looks better and better and better yeah exactly um, I mean yeah it was kind of you know both like both ways I mean if like Zhang what like it does it make my loss to him better like I don't know because yeah. it's, it's a difficult one but yeah I, I was definitely rooting for Joe um, known him longer and he's like you know but yeah, there's, uh, you, see, you could just see at this top level of boxing, there's, it, it's, it, you don't really know what's going to happen. Like, it's such a risky um, sport that I mean, like where, you know, like you, you kind of think someone's going to win, but then the complete opposite happens, or you, you know, you don't you don't really know it. That's why it's exciting, and um, you know, the heavyweights they carry the power, and uh, you can see the map, the style match up. Some matches. You know, like gel better, and like you know, styles make fights, and it's just proof proof of that. And do you think you'll see Joe Parker again in the ring? I saw your poster on your social media. Yeah, I mean, he's got a rematch with Zhang first, and then um, yeah, then maybe he could run it back again. Fights to do, it's, isn't it? No doubt about that. That's so, a, that's a quality, that was a quality fight, a proper yeah, yeah, dust up yeah, there. Yeah. It's like a long, grueling that was fight. A great fight. Yeah, great fight. That, well, it, oh, mate, all the way to the, what was it the tenth round or something? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a tough fight, a good fight, man. I enjoy, really enjoyed that fight. Is um, <clears throat> and yeah, he's just shown he's uh, he's rebuilt himself. Had two great wins. Five. Five. Five yeah, sorry, wins. Five. Yeah, he's five wins corrected. Now, yeah. So he's been very active. He's been busy, and he's got himself back in the swing. But it's good. But it is. It is a you know, it's a it's an absolute merry-go-round. 
There's no doubt about this heavyweight thing. It's, it's so, really so you see, you see my road to rebuilding, and first I got Cash Ali on Saturday, and then you, you know, you can see me with loads of other great fights. There's plenty of matchups to be made. Do you plan on doing a big job on Cash Ali on, on Saturday? Yeah, I plan on knocking him out and showing and proving to everyone that I, I've still got what it takes. Great stuff. Joe Joyce, we're going to let you go. Frank, I'm going to keep you. Thank you, big juggernaut. Let's Thank do a you. little Cheers, something here. Great to hear from Joe Joyce. It was, a, it was an interesting... A lovely, he's a lovely man. He's a lovely fellow. Interesting at the, uh, at the press conference just then with Joe Joyce and Cash Ali. I think they talked about what Joe Joyce had for his Christmas dinner. I heard parsnips and all sorts of stuff being mentioned up there. But Cash Ali's here to fight, isn't he? He is. In fact, when he was offered the fight, he jumped in. He jumped in and he said he wanted it. And, and for Joe, it's a fight he can't afford to lose. There'll be three losses on the trot if he loses this. And so he knows his career is literally on the line for this one. It, it, it's, it feels unthinkable almost from kind of like a year ago where he was juggernauting his way through absolutely the entire division. Everybody was saying at the time he would give Tyson or Usyk big problems. Mm -hmm. You know, they would all... A lot of people were saying he could win the fight. So it just ch shows you what's what can happen at the moment in this heavyweight division. I always say with these big guys, one punch can change the whole dynamic, the whole dynamic of it. It nearly happened with Tyson, with Tyson's fight. I'm just going to shuffle you around here a little That's bit, Frank. Yeah. It nearly happened with Tyson's fight when he fought Nagano, that one yeah. punch. Anything can happen, they're big, big men. And the same thing's happened with, with AJ. That, we did it in the first round, he found the key in the first round, that big shot, and finished it in the second with the same shot. You know, so... That, that's it. I mean, you can never write any of these guys off because they have power. They certainly do. Look, we're a few days removed from that huge event in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but a, a big show here in the United Kingdom. And, and I guess we've, we've got to keep these big British shows going because this, this is a cracker on Saturday, isn't it, Frank? Oh, brilliant fight. Do you know what? I was sitting up there, and I think I said to you up there, as I'm sitting here looking at each of these fights as we're talking about and looking at the records, you, you're saying to yourself, every fight's got every fight's a good match they've all got they're all got tough fights there's no gimme here for anybody no gimme and all have got a good story to go on with for the winners no doubt about that and hopefully some of the losers but the winners are going to go, go go on in a big way but the fights the fight card is a brilliant brilliant fight card really good quality tough fights and if you're a boxing fan you can't afford to miss it just a word on Nathan Heaney there. This, this is something I, I've talked about when this fight was first made with Brad Pauls. If Nathan Heaney had not beaten Denzel Bentley, if that fight hadn't have happened, would Brad Pauls be a favourite against Nathan Heaney heading into this fight? He's a, an English champion. Yeah, well, you don't, look, he's got a good, was he 18 and 1? Yeah. So he's got a good record. Uh, Nathan's got 18 and 0. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, for me, Nathan has just been, when I look back at it, I mean, what he's done in the last, well, since he's been with us, it's just phenomenal because he came on board as, oh, we've got this guy who can sell out a town hall. He, you know, great atmosphere, Delilah, the whole bit. And it's, yeah, it's a good good thing. What uh, What's happened, he's shown that he can actually fight. And he's shown that he's a good fighter and he can box. And that last performance against Denzel, I mean, that was quite... And it was an, For a guy who probably went in that fight, I bet he was about 8-1 to one against to win that. And went in there and looked like a ten to one on champion. I mean, the way he went in there and, and, and fought. And bearing in mind, Denzel's no slouch, is he? Denzel's a great fighter. Went the was it went the distance with the world yeah, champion yeah. and could have won that if he'd have if he'd, in the earlier rounds he'd have stamped his authority. So, you know, he's a good fighter and he's got an ambition. And his ambition is to to fight at Stoke City's ground, his hometown's ground. And the only way he can do that. He's got to win this fight because close season, we, we can get in there. After that, it's shut down for another year. So if he wants it, he's got to go and win and win in good style. But that's the carrot there. Can he do it? Can he do it in, with a guy who I feel is he replicates how Nathan was in the fight against Denzel? You know, he's in that position now. He talks about it. It's, it's his dream, it's his dream belt. And I'll tell you what, and he's confident. Mm -hmm. They're both very, very confident. In fact, you know, I've got to be honest, 
everyone who's been up there today is comp they all look at you know that look all those face off you know you're looking for a little telling moment between the two and when you're standing in between them looking in their eyes and their body language all of them are up for it I mean you know Dennis and Brad's going to be a, a bit of a what fight. were they saying to each other Oh, no, I can't do that. Can't I repeat mean, it. I'm not. I'm not a grass. <laughs> but what they was doing between them, I mean, I'm telling you, there is no love lost there. I hope they'll be friends afterwards. But I'm telling you, that is going to be a real ultra competitive fight. Well, the thing that Dennis McCann was was referring to at that press conference, they were both asked, "Would you go for a pint with Dennis? Would you go a pint for a pint with Brad afterwards?" And Brad said no. Dennis said yes. Well, let's hope that's <laughs> let's hope that's uh, not going to be the case. But look, don't worry about going for pints. They're fit as butchers' dogs, the both of them. They're really well prepared, and it will be it will be a war. There's no doubt about that. Just a final one on, on Liam Davis, IBO World Title on the line. We know the uh, you know, the four major belts are tied up with Nayo Inoue, but this is a hard fight in his division for Liam Davis. Look, he, he beat Lee McGregor over here, so you know he's. Lee McGregor's a good fighter, and he he, he 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 beat him. This is not a, this is not a gimme. It's a tough it's a tough tough fight, man. But you know what? In 15 fights, British, Commonwealth, European champion, done it the hard way. Good fighter, confident fighter, fancies the job, really fancy. If confidence wins fights, he'll win it. But not just the confidence; he has the ability to do it. And he's you know, and I and I really do like like him as a fighter, I like what he does and I like the way he goes about his work but he's in with a tough, tough guy it's his first big title fight IBO title fight and uh, he comes through that, then we'll see where we go there's some good fight, domestic fights to be made World is his lobster, would you say? The world is <laughs> definitely his lobster Frank, thank you so much hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for, for the way and if not we'll see you on Saturday and You'll see me when you're looking at I, me. I intend to look at you very soon thank you very much Frank Warren and thank you for joining us today. That concludes our press conference, The Magnificent Seven, ride again this Saturday night. So many fights with so many stories. I absolutely can't wait for this one. Join us live on the Queensbury YouTube page from 5.30 on Saturday where we've got Ezra Taylor against a, a, a very game opponent for the Commonwealth Silver title. And then we head live to TNT Sports at 6.30 for the Magnificent Seven, riding again. Before that, join us tomorrow for the weigh-in. We'll see you then.